Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. Pianist Aaron Goldberg, along with composer, arranger, and pianist Guillermo Klein, tonight are performing selections off their brand new album, Bianistan. And what I really, really love about this album is one, saxophonist and flautist Miguel Zinon is adding a whole nother level to Guillermo's composing as well as Aaron's piano skills. Also, Guillermo is playing the Fender Rhodes, which actually enhances some of the compositions that he wrote for Aaron and the unit on this album. <laughs> This is a very, very interesting project. How did you guys come together? Because you guys go back a long, long time. I think I met Guillermo in 1993. Is that possible? Uh, I was in Boston going to school, going to Harvard, and Guillermo was in Boston going to Berklee School of Music. And uh, a bass player introduced us. His name was Howard Britz. He was a guy I'd been playing with uh, over at my house, just playing some sessions. And I think he was working with Guillermo's band, his first band. And I had I'd heard Guillermo's music before. I'd heard of him. And I was honored when he gave me a call to, uh, to play in his band. So I started playing in his band. That's almost 20 years ago now. So we've been friends a long time. You go back also, like you said, 20 years. And you have been hailed as the Argentinian... Gil Evans. I mean, you have a dynamic range of writing and composing as well as piano skills. What was it that you were thinking sonically when you recorded this project to enhance Aaron's piano playing? No, I was thinking about him. I, 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 I was really imagining first what, what, I, what really got me, gave me fuel for this project was like, what about if I can if I write this and I hear him playing on it, because I know he will take it to a totally different dimension. That's what really made me go. And it's like, I don't, I'm, I don't have the chops, man. I, and he has the chops, the mind, the heart. And so that was quite an honor for me to imagine some music and, and he will digest it with the guys and take it to a different place. That, that, that how can not, in, inspire me, you know, like to write stuff, you know. All this uh, Muse Mucho, Blues for Alice, and you know, what they are playing, man, you know, I was sitting there not playing, you saw that? What they are playing is, is, is very, very high, it's very high, it's very, very high. 
I, I will never forget this week. I will never forget. What they are doing is, is all food for the soul, to me at least. Sonically, when I saw you guys perform and listening to the disc, I heard a lot of the late 60s as far as the Joel Dorn, Nashley Erdogan, Atlantic Records sides, as well as Creed Taylor, where they fuse both straight ahead with the electronic. And I go with you playing the piano, him playing Fender. Was that what you guys were going for? I think the answer, the, the honest answer is not consciously. Uh, I know that I've, I've, I've definitely heard a lot of those records. Uh, I think anytime you, you mix Fender Rhodes in there into the, into the mix, so to speak, it evokes a certain kind of era. But uh, the Rhodes itself is timeless, I think, you know, and, and people have been, been using it um, you know, ever since the 60s, the 70s, 80s, 90s, and, and I grew up playing Rhodes as well as piano. So it's a kind of a part of my sonic universe, um, more generally even. Uh, I think Guillermo's, you know, he's grown up with Argentinian rock and pop, folk music, tangos, a lot of uh, minimalism, contemporary classical music. So many influences ha have, have informed his own sound. Should definitely ask him this question, but uh, it, wasn't a conscious, it wasn't a conscious decision to... I don't think it was really on either of our minds, it's, it, but, it, but I understand why you say that. What, I think uh, about harmony, you know, I... I think like two two harmony providers, the piano and the roads, and I think also about attack. You know, the the piano doesn't have that, such a sustain that the roads have. So the combination, even if you're playing the same lines, it sounds like a totally different thing. Which sometimes we do, we double sometimes on line, and also we have like four hands, so we have 20 players. You no, know? like a lot of harmony could be made if if the parameters are clear and correct which we worked on that and that's that's why it's a pleasure you see there's not a lot of crashing you know and then also you have Miguel bringing in both alto and also flute and it adds to the world harmonies that you're bringing to your compositions but it's also kind of a very interesting and unique mesh of world influences I think flute and Rhodes have always sounded great together, and those guys that you're talking about were very aware of that. As well as uh, you know, a lot of Brazilian composers have always used you know flute and Rhodes is a beautiful combination. Uh, yeah, the flute is very evocative. Uh, it's hard to explain some of these things. You know why music affects you in a certain way, why the sound of flute makes you feel what you feel. But the the flute has always been very emotional in in jazz, especially in jazz non-classical music context, pop music too. And it's because it's so delicate, it meshes very beautifully, both with Rhodes and piano.
one of the beautiful things about this CD too, you guys pay tribute to the great Charlie Parker and you guys do two dynamic renditions and you did Donna Lee tonight. Yeah. What brought this on? Donna Lee? I was at, uh, learning how to write this program, this called Sibelius, it's a computer program. So I said I want to choose this, this tune and, and I just wrote the tune on the program just to learn the program and I realized that it's filled with 16 notes so I just made all 16 notes and then I start uh, assignating the notes to different instruments and I love that tune, I, I, I had a lot of fun with that. I, I think Charlie Parker it's it's we were talking about him with the guys the other day. I think Charlie Parker is somebody that found something with his friends and and got to the completion complete. It's just being very young, he got something like Stravinsky or Piazzolla that is complete, you know, that it's so powerful, no? So all his tunes are complete and the way he plays so uh, that's why it's, it's, a, it's a rendition to somebody that is very, very inspiring regardless if you can blow on it, you know, it's, it's in my case, no, and I feel very like in peace with that, having Aaron and Eric and Miguel and, and Matt playing on that, because uh, it's, it, it keeps alive that type of flame, you know, when, I, when they play on that, it's that flame is truly alive, you know, it's a way to keep playing that music and feel it that is happening, you know. Yeah, Charlie Parker is a, a major part of our language, you know, as contemporary jazz musicians. You can't help but, you know, speak Charlie Parker, so to speak. He left a legacy for all of us, and it continues to inform us no matter what style of music we play. So it, it makes perfect sense for, for Guillermo to take Charlie Parker's language and apply his rhythmic concepts to it. it it's both challenging and familiar at the same time, so it's, it's the perfect kind of opportunity for us to to push ourselves to use what we know and then go beyond what we can do. So we're both at home and we're also far away at the same time. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a joy to, to play it. It's, it's been a challenge and a joy. <laughs> for another edition of the Pace Report reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Aaron Goldberg for his time as well as Guillermo Klein as well as the staff and management here at the Jazz Standard. As always remember please visit my website www.thepacereport.com for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time remember if it's in the groove it'll make you move. Till next time peace. Oh.